Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. Amen. Woke us up this Amen. morning and started us on our way and brought us into his house just one more time. Amen. And we just thank him and give his name the praise, the honor, and the glory because he's worthy of it, right? Yeah. Yes. So if, 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 he, if he gave you life this morning and touched you with his finger of love and got you started this morning, you should give him some praise. We ask you to help us in devotion this morning and lifting up his name in Sunday school's morning devotion. Jesus is on, he's on the main line. Tell him what you want.
We thank you for those that have uh, been saved and those that are uh, still worshiping you. And if you can come into your house once again, to give your name praise. Father, we thank you for the pastor of this church, Father. That's how he's doing.
as well. And when you watch it this evening, please do us a favor by tapping on the subscribe button and ringing the bell so as you will receive our, uh, our uploads. We thank God for all of you for your fellowship. Put it on a watch party. Bring it out there. Let everybody be a part of this ministry. We'll be so grateful. It is our prayer that you will be blessed this morning beyond measure as our morning manner teacher comes and opens the word of God and ministers to our soul. Please receive our teacher this morning, Reverend Cedric Jack. Superintendent, certainly let me give honor to our pastor who Amen. has been doing a tremendous job in leadership and leading us in COVID-19. Amen. Amen. He has been working extremely hard. He's passionate about the work of God and we give him all the honor, give him all the due that he deserves. Amen. Uh, Amen. Our lesson this morning uh, is coming from the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah. We're going to be in Jeremiah 21. Jeremiah 21. We're dealing with Jeremiah, a different prophet this morning but we're dealing with a similar cycle uh, of God's people. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is a familiar cycle. It is, we see, what we're going to see today is what we've seen with other prophets. Uh, we see the people of God. We see God loving his people. Uh, we see his people sinning, uh, not repenting. God punishes them, loves them. Uh, and then God forgives them, brings them back to a place of restoration, uh -huh. and then they go right back to doing what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And we see this throughout the prophets, and it, it, it shows us that uh, if God still allows prophets or raises prophets in this time to lead his people, it shows us God's grace. And so when we look in this lesson, we've got to understand if he's the God of grace, he's also the God of a just punishment. Hmm. Amen. Uh, and again, we've stated this before in previous Sunday school lessons, uh, how God deals with his people. He raises up a prophet, Jeremiah. The backstory is Jeremiah, we know him, uh, we nickname him the weeping prophet. Uh -huh. uh, he is named the weeping prophet not just because of what he's delivering, mm -hmm. but he's the weeping prophet because he delivers to a people that refuse to repent. Mm. Bye -bye. Amen. And, 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 and so Jeremiah weeps and he cries as he pours out God's message. And in this particular message, Jeremiah uh, pours out to a particular king. Uh, we're going to discover that in the lesson. He pours out to a particular king. Mm. You need to repent. But he not only pours out to the king, but the people that the king is leading. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so when we look at the background of this lesson, uh, the lesson tells us in the principle layout, tells us evil is pervasive throughout human society. Now listen closely because, uh, again, even though we're in 2020, it sounds like we're right in Jeremiah's time. Mm. You right about evil is pervasive throughout human society. Can people continue to do evil without consequences? Jeremiah tells us that God is a God of justice and will recompense evil. Now, I aim for Sunday school this morning. Judah would pay the ultimate price for their continued disobedience. But even in Israel's judgment, God's mercy 
is evident in his dealings with his people. Mm. Time and again, God shows himself to be a God of justice and mercy. Thank you, Lord. And we ought to thank God this morning thank because uh, uh, God could have killed us last night. Amen. Amen. Uh, but he, here again, he shows his grace and his mercy. Now, <clears throat> we're going to deal with this lesson uh, in short verses, but it is a particular message for uh, Judah in particular. Now, now we got to understand that Jeremiah preaches mm -hmm. or teaches and preaches and teaches to Judah. Israel, uh, the kingdom of Israel, is no longer in existence. Jeremiah is on the backside of the last 40 years of, of this nation. And he's preaching this message. Listen to what I say now. Israel is no longer in existence. Israel was the result of a split kingdom. Here Jeremiah is preaching to Judah. And Judah is, is on what we call the south side. Israel was on the north. They were the northerners. And Judah was the southern. And he says, Israel is no longer in existence. Why? Because of their own sin? Because of their own, uh, they, they did not repent. And so God would allow uh, that the other nations would come in and consume them. Mm -hmm. And here it is, same, same thing in Jeremiah's time. Uh, they, they have enemies. They have the Babylonians. They have the Assyrians. And they have Egypt. They are all pressing to take Judah out. Yeah. And guess what? You would think God will say, no, I'm not going to let that happen. Right. But God says, I'm going to punish you, but I'm going to allow the enemy to take over on you. Because why? You will not repent. Can I tell you this morning that if we don't repent, God will allow some things to happen. And he'll watch and stand there. Oh, yeah. And he's still in control, but he'll stand there and watch. Yeah. Simply because we refuse say to that, repent. Brother. Say that. So it tells us this morning that we have choices in life. Life is about choices. Mm -hmm. I wish I had some help. I wish I could get my help today. Amen. Life is about choices. Yeah. And Judah decides we're going to make a choice, but it's not going to be of God. Mm -hmm. Watch the text. We want to go and deal with verse 8. Verse 8, 9 and 10. Uh, one of the hardest concepts for human beings to grasp is that the vengeance is the law. Hmm. Our enemy, listen, I just want to give a little preference here. Our enemy is not getting away with anything. Mm -mm. But the prerequisite is to wait on God. That's it. While at the same time remaining faithful, faithful. to God and holy because of God. Listen, here's the prerequisite for uh -huh. Judah. They have to remain faithful and they have to remain holy to God and because of God. Right. I've had enemies uh, personally on my top 10 list. Mm. <laughs> on, the, on America's most wanted list. All right. That I wanted God to do something about. Right. Uh-huh. But God says, I want you to wait. But in the waiting, Judah, I want you to be repentant and obey. Mm -hmm. No, Judah says, we like sin. Yeah. The leader likes sin. That's Judah. Mm -hmm. and, and God is going to punish, watch now, he's going to punish the leader, Zedekiah, he's going to punish him, but he's also going to punish the people that followed him. Right. And some people come up with the excuse, well, the leader did it, so... Uh, I followed him, I followed them, and because I followed them and they sinned, I, I have no, you know, I'm off the hook. Okay. And God says, no, I'm going to punish him, mm -hmm. but I'm going to punish you for doing the same thing. Right, uh, right. Right, because you know how sin is. It's just like a blessing. When a blessing comes, a blessing falls down and goes everywhere. Well, sin is the same way. When one sin, everybody begins. Before you know it, it begins to infiltrate. Right. Right? Jeremiah's day was no different than our day. Watch this. He preaches in the most 
uh, 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 terrible times. He preaches in the midst of apostasy. He preaches in the midst of political chaos. He preaches in the midst of social uh, inequities. He, he preaches in the midst of economic disparity. Mm. Listen now what he's dealing with. He preaches in moral decay. He preaches in a time of violence and oppression. Hello, 2020. Mm. Right. Let, let me say it again. I got time. He preaches in apostasy. People falling away from the church. He preaches in political chaos, social inequities. He preaches in the midst of economic disparities. He preaches in the middle of moral decay, and he preaches in violence and oppression. He preaches also uh, with and alongside his contemporaries or his cohorts. Ezekiel was preaching the same type of message. Habakkuk was preaching the same type, mm -hmm. listen now, the same type of message. Zephaniah, mm -hmm. Obadiah, yeah. mm -hmm. they all had to deal with the same thing. And so God raises up prophets in this time. In this troubled time, from an internal, watch this, the problem was not external. The problem, Judah, was internal. Mm -hmm. Bad leaders and sinful behavior. Dual responsibility. Jeremiah, he had two responsibilities. He had to preach uh, an indictment, but at the same time, he's responsible for preaching hope. He preaches an indictment. He's crying because he uh -huh. preaches to a sinful nation. Uh -huh. But at the same time, God uses him to preach hope. And here we are with the king, Zedekiah. Uh, during this time, it is a, what we call a monarch rule, uh, where there's kings and queens and heads of states. Uh, and, and that word deals with to rule. Uh, they didn't want, watch, 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 watch what happens. Judah did not want what we call a theocracy. <laughs> they didn't want a God-led kingdom. Okay. They wanted a king, you know, after God had provided all of this, and they didn't want, they said, and so God says, okay, I'm going to give you what you want. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful sometimes asking for things, because God sometimes will stand back and give you what you want, mm -hmm. yeah. and let the won't do what it wants to do to you. <laughs> That's, that's what happens in the lesson. Right about it. He, God lets the won't happen, and then the won't came in and did whatever he wanted to do. Uh, he has Jeremiah, a prophet. He has Zedekiah, a wicked king. And he has Judah, the suffering nation. Watch this. They are suffering because of their own disobedience. And the wicked king. Okay. And we've got to be honest this morning. The reason we are in positions and places and predicaments is because of our own doing. Mercy, Lord. Yeah, we, we try to blame God. We try to blame God. Yeah. We try to blame the leader. But we have to make our own choice. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. God says, I've given you a mind. I've given you a heart. Mm -hmm. And you can make a choice whether to do right or do wrong. Watch this. It's strange. The wicked king is going to, in this lesson, watch this. He's wicked. But he's going to send for help uh, from God's people. He dispatches his counsel. Go down to Jeremiah and see if God has a word <laughs> for us. Even the king who's wicked knows there's a God. Two things we know from this lesson. Number one, Zedekiah ain't crazy. <laughs> He's a wicked king, mm -hmm. but he knows there's a God somewhere. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, he knows. We know. He knows. He ain't great. He knows out of all of his wicked leadership and all of his disobedience and all of his sin, he knows there's a God somewhere. Mm -hmm. But he also knows, secondly, that God has a word. Yeah. Isn't that strange? The wicked king 
knows more about our God than the people that are with God. Mm. Mm. That's what sin will do. It will rob you and I. It will strip us of any moral uh, compass we may have. It, it will rob our minds on doing the right thing. Some people may argue the reason we were uh, repented is because uh, not repented is because our leader wasn't repentant. Right. Hmm. That, that, that is the excuse. Hmm. And look, it is a great one. Hmm. It's a great excuse. But it's a bad one. Yes, sir. God holds me accountable. Right. God holds you accountable for every action that you do. Amen. Amen. And so when we look at the lesson, we're going to look on how the lesson is short. So that's why I want to give this preference because it teaches us how God operates. God does not change, watch this, his, uh, he does not change his MO. Thank you, Lord. He is God today, yesterday, and forevermore. He does not change. He requires us to walk in holiness then and now. He requires us to be his royal priesthood then and now. And he requires us to, to walk and give justice uh, to the oppressed people around us then and now. He does not change. But what we find out in the lesson is, even though God does not change, the people change. Right. Yeah, Lord, I'm going to obey you. Yeah, Lord, I'm going to follow you. And as soon as God begins to bless Judah, now remember, Judah had a bad history of looking at Israel, and God says, I'm going to give you a chance to repent and the word teaches us they went the whole way after what Israel did. Mm -hmm. uh, from, from the black community, that means hope. <laughs> <laughs> they went the whole way. In other words, they went to sin just like Israel. Right. Right? And they were not turned around. Israel is no longer in existence, and Judah is on a quick fall going the same direction. Right? Let, let me say this to you. What God does is justice. Some people say, why would God do that? What he does is justice. Now, here's what God also does for us. Before he whoops us and punishes us, he always warns us. Right. Judah, at this point, has been warned and taken advantage of God's grace time after time. Mm -hmm. Even the, the king, Zedekiah, time after time. How do you know we take advantage of God's grace? Because we still live. Right. My, my, my. Amen. He still let us live after Thank all you. the yes, sin Lord. we've done. Thank you, Lord. And a lot of us like to talk in past tense. After all the sin I did. No. After Amen. all the sin we'll do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing worse than a sinful say saved folk. Mm -hmm. right. I'm saved but I keep sinning. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. saved but I keep disobeying God. God said nope. Can't happen like that. Why? Because you are my royal priesthood. Uh -huh. Now, there's a now message, and then there's going to be a future message. The now message is in verse 8, 9, and 10. Watch what it says. And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I set before you a way of life and the way of death. He's talking to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, watch this now, because every preacher, every prophet feels that when he preaches, that sometimes that when he preaches, the attack uh, that comes back is on him. But no, no. Jeremiah is a spokesperson for God. And God sends this message through Jeremiah. He says, now, here's what God says. I see the playing field, right? God says, life, I set before you the way. Watch what God says. I set before you the way of life and the way of death. That's important. Because it tells you and I that you and I don't control life, nor do we control death. Thank you, Lord. That ought to help us turn Thank around you. right there. Thank you. We don't, we can't control when we come into the earth, right. into this world, 
Thank you. Neither can we control when we leave. How Thank do you. I know that? Check COVID-19 records. Right. Check it. Hmm. There's some people that thought they would be here and they're gone by way of a virus. Mm -hmm. my, my, my. And then those that are here that are still remaining have not waken up to realize I could be dead and gone too. Amen. Say that, Reverend. Does not matter your age, does not matter no, your color, no. does not matter your background. No, no, no. Why? Because God controls life and death. That helps me to understand that he's not only a universal God, but he's a sovereign God. Wait a minute. He controls when I wake up, yes. Mm -hmm. But he also controls uh, me by keeping me sleep at night and not falling to sleep. Mm. See, God keeps us uh, asleep, but he makes sure we don't fall asleep. Right. Amen. Like Lord, God. have mercy. Yes, sir. Mm. And what is God telling Jeremiah? You better let them know who I am. When he talks about life and death, you better tell them what my prerequisites are, what my MO is. I'm in control of life and death. He says, I'm going to set it before you. Here, here's what you have, Judah. Now your options, Deacon Shote, are limited. Hmm. Mm -hmm. God gives us, see, God, uh, when you go to In and Out Burger, you got a couple options. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you get like, you get like Burger King or Wendy's, they run out of beef. The options are limited. Uh -huh. And God says, I've given you plenty of options. But because you keep sinning, guess what? You ain't got the two now. Mm -hmm. You got two. You can die in the city mm -hmm. or you can be captured. Mm -hmm. Either way, I'm in control. Mm -hmm. See, that comes a point in our time in our life. We get out of control. We think we in control. And God will speak to us. God will put things in front Have of us mercy, Lord. and God will present things or our enemies mm. to come close to us and God waken, awakens us and tells us, listen, you got, you got no more options. Either you turn to me or I turn against you. Right. Uh, he says, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. Here's verse 9. Verse 9 says, he that abided, here's what God says, here's your first option. He that abided in the city shall die by the sword. Wait a minute. God says, you said, I can stay in the city, Lord. Yeah, but you're going to die. Right? By the sword. And if the sword doesn't kill you, which it means the enemy, there's a family going to be in the land. Mm -hmm. Not only will I send in the enemy, mm. but I'm going to clear out your covers. Mm. God says, I'm going to clean out your kitchen. Mm -hmm. I'm not only going to clean out your kitchen, but I'm going to shut the grocery stores mm. down. I'm talking about in Judah's time. Mercy, Lord. I'm going to clean out your cupboards. You got, you're not going to have any income, Judah. Mm. Mm. If you stay in the city, you're going to get killed by the enemy. Mm. If you make it mm. and the enemy doesn't kill you, I'm going to starve you to death. Mm. Because there's a family, watch this, uh -huh. not in your house, no, there's no. a family in the land. In the land, rather. And when God sends a family in the land, can't nothing, no one can do. Nothing. Not a president. Nothing. Not a statesman, not a congressman, nothing. not a representative, no. not a king, no. not a dictator, nothing. Donald, nothing. Donald Trump, not anyone. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. My Lord. He says, and watch this. God uses specific hard words with Jeremiah. Hmm. He said, and by the family. And, wait a minute, another and another God? Another and. So you can be on one or two sides of the hand with God. And he keeps blessing you, <laughs> or and he keeps cursing you. Yes. Right. And by the pestilence. Mm. He says, I'm going to clear out your cupboards. I'm going to uh, clean the grocery stores out. But then there's going to be a sickness in the land. Mm. See, again, Judah is in the position and they are limited options because of their own doing. Mm -hmm. We can't keep sinning God and let grace abound. It just won't happen. No, God said, I ain't going to let you continue to do that. And he said, I'm still in the city. That's the first option. He that goeth out and fall into the Chaldeans. Now, Chaldeans, again, is synonymous with the Babylonians. Same people. Mm -hmm. He says, 
They besiege you. He shall live, and his life shall be unto him for a prey. You got one or two options in verse 9. You can either stay in the city and be killed, yeah. or when you go out the city and be captured, and what God's really saying, give up. Yes, sir. Throw up the surrender. Yes, sir. Right? And that's really what our lives are comprised by. God is saying, if you're going to come to me, you first got to surrender. Right. That's the problem. You want to know why we don't have joy? You want to know why we cannot move and press forward? Because we haven't completely surrendered to God. It's not about surrendering to the enemy. It's about surrendering to God. He says, you got two options. There are no more three options. Number four, give me a number five with onions and tomatoes. No, you got two options. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. Remember, as Jeremiah is preaching, he's weeping. Because mm -hmm. he can see what God is doing. Mm -hmm. And at this point, God is not saying what he said in, in uh, uh, when God was in Genesis, when he says, I'm repenting of this. I'm a, no, no, no. God is not dealing with, uh, like he did with another king, he says, I'm going to give you 15 more years when you turn to the ball. At this point, God is not turning around. Mm -hmm. the, what God has said is going to happen, I want to help you this morning, is going to happen. Mm -hmm. For I have, what, watch what God says, for I have set my face against thee, against this city for you. God says, I'm going to lay it out for you. Why are you doing this, God? Because you've been healed. And he says, I'm going to set my face against you. That's important because anytime God's face is against you, that means he's not smiling on you. Mm. Lord, have mercy. Notice now, he didn't turn his back on Judah. He turned his face against him. His back would be, to turn his back would mean they're no longer his people. Right. No, no, no. That's not what the Bible teaches us. They're always his people. Right, but he turns his face against them, which means I'm no longer going to smile on you. Mm -hmm. He says, when God stops smiling on you, it's going to be some long days. When God stops smiling in your finances and stops smiling in your family, stops smiling on your friends, and stops smiling for this and that, you're going to have some long, dark days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that a witness? God, when he stops smiling on you, because of your own doing. Mm -hmm. Amen. You are where you are because of your own doing. Not your sister, not your family, nope. not your mama, nope. not, the, not, not the man, right. not the po, -po. Yep. It's because of you. Right. He says, for I have set my face against this city for evil and not for good, said Jeremiah. No, the text says, said the Lord. It shall be given into the hand. God says, I'm going to take everything from you. I'm going to clear out your covers. I'm going to shut your kitchen down. I'm going to close the grocery store, but I'm also going to give you into the hands of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Lord, whatever you do, mm. whoop me, but don't turn me over to my enemy. Mm. And that's a bad state to be in. Yeah, oh, Lord, have mercy. God will sometimes turn you over to the people that hate you the most. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. He'll sometimes turn you over yes, to situations will. That you struggled to get out of before. Yes. Why? Because it's then when you get into those situations yeah. when you realize I, I, I should have trusted you. I should have. Mm -hmm. I should have tried to, and yeah. I should have stuck with you, God, and I should have listened to you. Should have listened. Oh Lord. God is like a, a Pareto that that says if you don't do, I've got to do something too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm doing this. Watch this. Here's what God says. I'm not doing this. That I owe you an explanation. No, sir. You know, uh, 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 again, when we were told stuff, when we were coming up, there was no, no explanation oh, none attached of that. to it. None of that. Yeah. Either you do it or die. Yeah. That, that was the option. That was the we didn't have any option. Yeah. You either uh -huh. go or die. You either get up or die. You either eat or die. Right. <laughs> that was, that's the kind of parents I grew up. I don't know what this economy is now. Tom. But either you do what I tell you to do. That's right. Or the police don't have to show up. That's right. That's right. <laughs> For I set my face against you. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon. And he shall burn in with fire. Now remember, Zedekiah, who's leading these people of Judah, not only was he sinful, 
But he also was arrogant. Remember, he, he was supposed to pay Nebuchadnezzar, or Nebuchadnezzar, however you want to say it, right. he was supposed to pay him uh, territory rights. Right, 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 right. right? Like, this is my corner, man. Yeah. This is my corner. If you're going to come through here, if you're going to sell stuff through my corner, you got to pay. Yeah. And he said, and, and listen, even the Lord authorized him. And he said, no, I'm not paying that. And so, not only does he have an enemy, watch this, not only does he have an enemy without, which is the other nations, he has an enemy within. What do you do when God becomes your enemy? When God turns his face against you, what do you do? Well, all you can do is surrender and give up. And here, can you see the preacher? He's crying. He sees the people. He sees their rebellion. He sees that they're not repenting, and he's crying, and he's weeping. And God turns his face against them. And then we get into verse 11. We're closing. Verse 11, verse 8, 9, 10 was a now message. Mm -hmm. But 11, 12, 13, 14 going to be a future message. He says, I'm still going to whoop you. You're not off the hook. But he says, now, as far as concerning, verse 11, as concerning the house of king of Judah, say, hear ye the word of the Lord. Here's God, here's God slipping in grace again. And touching the house of the king of Judah, hear ye the word of the Lord. God says, here's my future message. He says, uh, when I speak, I, I, I hear people talking about uh, this message that all states used to come out, one of the insurance company, when they speak, everybody listen. No, when God speaks, everybody listen. Right. Watch what he says. Old house of David. God, God is not only talking about future, but he's talking about history. Old house of David. Thus said the Lord. God says, Here's how I wanted my house, David, to be set up through the lineage and through the connection. Even though you wanted kings, I'm going to let that be part of it. So when he mentions David, he mentions history. But when he mentions uh, touching the house of the king of Judah, he's talking about future. He says, the Lord execute judgment in the morning. Here's what he says. I want the rest of y'all still living. The future kings. I want you to what I told David to do, I have not changed. What do I want you to do? Number one, I want you to execute judgment in the morning and deliver him that is spoiled out of the hand of oppressor. It was not unusual for uh, people that were not preachers, uh, that were not prophets, uh, to give leadership in this time. Right. It was not unusual. God would use a uh, uh, councilman or what we call councilmen or governors or mayors uh, to give direction to his people. Mm -hmm. And so that responsibility from a social standpoint, from a uh, economic standpoint, from uh, running uh, the city manager, running the city was to execute judgment properly, was to execute uh, Dealing with oppression in the city. And he says, here's what I want the future leaders to do. Whether you're a prophet or whether you're a statesman or whoever you are. That's, that's, what's, that's why it's so important that they needed to be under theocracy. It didn't matter what your role was. You were still under the rule of God. And deliver him that is spawned out of the hand of the oppressor. That word keeps coming up. Being oppressed today, being black in America today, being oppressed is nothing new. Right. Nothing new, Rem. And, and it helps us to understand that if God had not did it, we'd still be in a worse predicament than we are now. Watch this. He says, out of the hand of the oppressor, lest my fury, this is God talking, lest my fury go out like fire and burn that none can quench it. God said, lest I get upset with you. Now, some people think God doesn't get angry. Yes, he does. God said, now, I'm whooping them, but I'm telling you what the future is. 
You don't do it. Let's see what happens. Because I'm going to get upset. And God says, watch this. Because of the evil of your doing. That word keep coming up. Evil, oppressing, sinning. Verse 13. Behold, I am against thee. If you do that, if you're doing it, God says, I'm not going to change. I'm against you. Again, it's, it's bad to have enemies. It's bad to have a bad boss. It, it's bad to have bad this. But when God is against you. Behold, I'm against thee, O inhabitants of the valley. Watch what God says. O inhabitants of the valley and the rock of the plain, said the Lord. He says, no place where you can go high. No place. I hear the psalmist saying in Psalm 139, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. Yes, sir. But, but if I go down to hell, thou art there too. God says you can't be up, watch this, you can't in, inhabit in the valley, I'm there. Yes, sir. If you go up on the rock of the plain, up on the mountain, I'm there. Yes, said the Lord, which said, who shall come down against us, or who shall enter yes, into our heaven? Yes, God said, it does not matter where you are, whether you're on the valley, yes, whether you're on the housetop, whether you're on the mountaintop, mm -hmm. I'm there. So what is God saying? When you do wrong, I'll come and get you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, you don't have to come out. I'll come in and get you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Because somehow sin makes us believe that we can hide from God. Oh my. Yes, it does. Sin mm -hmm. makes us believe that we can sometimes we can when we sin we can shelter somewhere under a rock or in a valley yes. or or wherever. That's what sin does. Sin robs. Watch this. Yes. Sin robs us. A clear conscious thinking. Yeah, it, it robs us of sensible things. We think stupid when we sin. Mm. We do stupid things. <laughs> and God says, You can't go anywhere that I'm not there. But then finally, verse 14. But I will punish mm -hmm. you according, watch this, not just because I want to. Mm -hmm. I'm punish you. According to the fruit yes. of your doing. Notice how God uses the word fruit. He uses fruit in the Old Testament, but he also uses fruit in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Fruit is indicative of what your response is to God. Okay. Now, you can either have good fruit or bad fruit. Mm -hmm. Judah chooses, had chosen, they had fruit, but it was bad. And guess who the fruit, fruit inspector is? <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's not him. It's not her. It's not it. God says, I'm the one that inspects the fruit. And Judah's choices, they are out. You no longer have a choice. You got two. You can die where you are or go out there and, be sur and surrender and be captured and leave. Those are the choices, you. Why? Because you made a clear, conscious choice to sin, including your leader. I have, watch this, Judah, I have a punishment for not only your leader, but I have a punishment for you. Mm -hmm. He sinned and led you wrong, but you're going to get punished for going wrong. But mm -hmm. that's our excuse. And God said, no, 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 no. Every, that's why salvation is so important. Because no one can stand in your gap for your salvation. Right. Thank you, Lord. Well, have mercy now because Thank nobody you. can stand in your gap for your punishment. Right. Thank you, Lord. What I do is on me. Yes, right. sir. Now, it may it may affect my generation, uh -huh. but I got to stand before God and get that. For yourself, yes. He says, but I will punish you according to the fruit of your doings. Here it is. Said the Lord. And I will kindle a fire in the forest. Thereof, and it shall devour all things round about. God says, I'm making it personal. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar was doing God's work of punishing Judah. God speaks to Zedekiah. Zedekiah has enough sense to say, go see, please, what God has a word for us. And, 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 and the prophet comes back and says, yeah, he got a word for you. He's about to whoop y'all. 
and you. So the lesson teaches us this morning that God is going to execute judgment, justice. It is up to us. It is up to us. And God is, as his people, he's saying, I'm giving you the task. It's up to you to execute. I'm not going to come down from heaven and make you do it. I'm not going to do this and that. You have my word. You have my prophet. Here it is. When you do it, you get blessed. When you don't do it, you get cursed. When you have good fruit, you get good blessings. When you have bad fruit, you will get a good whooping. Right. And God says, you got a choice. And that's what life is, brothers and sisters. We got a choice. We got a choice to live for God or not. We got a choice. And now, if you go, let me just say this to you now. I'm closing. If you're going to say you're going to be his, everything comes with it, comes with it. Everything comes with it. The whoopings, the blessings. The praying, the this, the that. God says, if you're going to be mine, this is how I run the theocracy. Right. Now, if you want to do your own thing, go ahead and go on the kings and rules and do it. But under the theocracy, this is how I run the show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I found out personally that it's better to be with God, be with God right. than God to turn his face yes, sir. against yes, sir. you. Yes, sir. Yo, aren't you glad to know that he didn't turn away from them, he just turned his face? He no longer smiles on them yes, sir. temporarily. Yes, sir. But then God eventually smiles on them again. Yes, sir. And that's the kind of God we serve. And the more God smiles on us, it ought to prompt us mm -hmm. and help us to hurry up and get motivated that I want to live right for God. Mm -hmm. God bless you this morning. That's our Sunday school. We pray that God has moved in a great way this morning. Amen. I'll turn it over to our superintendent. Amen. 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 Welcome to Sunday School lesson this morning, Morning Matter. We thank all those that watch, watch and tune in live streaming and wait on a phone call. And we hope God has spoken, spoke to you through, uh, through, through the lesson and, and gave you something that can uh, apply to your everyday life and you can carry out. Tell somebody about the good news of the Lord. With that said, we'll close out with a prayer. We thank our pastor. We thank our teacher, uh, Reverend Garrett, again, for a wonderful lesson. Um, let's look to God. Father God, we come before you as humble as we know how. Thanking you for being God and God all by yourself, oh, yes. Father God. Father God, you woke us up this morning and you touched us with a finger of love. You allowed us to come into your house one more time. We thank you for our pastor, Father God. We thank you for our teacher, Father God, for the Sunday school. We thank you for all the, the classes that are being taught over the phone, Father God. And whatever kid is giving the lesson, Father God, may you speak through them, Father God. Give them understanding of your word as they teach it, Father God. And then let the listeners get an understanding of your word as well, Father God. And then apply it to every, all of us, our everyday life, Father God. And may we tell somebody about the good news of you, Father God. Father God, we thank you for just one more time, Father God, to get an understanding of your word, Father God. We lift you up and we give your name and praise and honor and glory. We thank you for our Sunday school hour one more time, Father God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.